Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous, fabulous TV show. I am so excited that you're back today. This is the Tanya Hoffman Fabulous TV Show. And I am so excited to have my friend here, Karen Robertson, today. Hi, Karen. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here, too. Yay. <laughs> On the Fabulous TV Show Yay. for a fabulous chat. <laughs> and, you know, this is what I love. And I say this every time. Oh, my gosh. You just get to meet so many fabulous people. And what's nice is Karen and I are in the same city. So we get to go have coffee every once in a while. Yes. And, you know, when you're reaching out and getting to meet so many fabulous people, you really don't know what you're going to find out. And how not only can they change your life, but how can you help change theirs? And I think Karen and I have that great symbiotic relationship going. <laughs> Yes, we do, because you're, you know, Public Speakers Association, when I learned about what you're doing, I was so excited and hopped right in. Right. So, I'm learning through you, you're doing your course, and I mean, I've done a lot of speaking, um, primarily with my author background, and some professionally with marketing, but um, still, I knew that there's so much I could learn from you, and your courses have been fabulous, so, yes, symbiotic, we have, we have shared. It's so much fun. You know, and everyone, make sure you stick around to the entire end because Karen is going to give something that's worth $500 away. So don't Yay. leave. Make sure that you stick around. Now, we're talking a little bit today about writing books. And yes. I know a lot of you out there, you've thought about it. It's probably mm -hmm. wiggled around in your head. You probably were reading a book and you're like, I could probably do that. Why couldn't I do that? What would I write about? You know, so Karen is going to talk a little bit about it today. And I want to give you some insight of my transformation. You know, one of the issues that a lot of people have is sitting yourself down and doing it. And that I think was the hardest thing for me beyond just the sitting down was actually making an effort to sit down to do just that. And that was an incredible struggle for me. And I even hired my, you know, I got a publisher and I had him look at how can he help me push me along? Because that is unfortunately what I needed. I needed someone to go, okay, Tanya, where's your next chapter? <laughs> and so it took me two years to write my book. So here's my book, A Client a Day, The Coffee Shop Way. And I wrote it in yeah. coffee shops. And it was so much fun when it was done. Yeah. Let's just say that. But the whole experience was incredible. And it really was after the fact that I was so glad because people are like, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. You need to write a book. You're a speaker. You need a book. And I'm glad I did it. Now I'm coming out. I came out with a compilation book and now I'm part of several other compilation books and I'm coming out with two other books now. So it kind of gets You're your hooked. ball rolling. <laughs> You're hooked. Yeah, you, you get hooked. <laughs> and you start figuring out, okay, this isn't as difficult as I thought it was. I had it in my head. It was difficult. Yes. So hopefully you in listening today just knows that it isn't as hard but you've got to have support. You've got to have someone that encourages you. And I think that's the challenge for most people is they don't, they're not encouraged enough to finish, you yeah. know, and then that fear of, Oh my gosh, people are going to see it. You know, people are going to, oh, yeah. what if they don't like it? What if they think it's horrible? You know? Yeah. And yeah. I had, you know, you always have critics and I've had some rough critics, you know, and then I've had some incredible people that are like, oh, my gosh, you changed my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? That's yeah. what it's about. So really make, make it about what you can do for others and how exciting that would be. So I'm really excited to have Karen on. She um, talks about you're, you've written a book, so now what? Right? And that's always the question. Yeah. People are like, okay, I've got my manuscript. I don't now know. What? Exactly. So Karen, can you give us some insight of what you mean by that? 
Yeah, look, you touched on so many things there, but I think the thing that I want to start with is your big why. What is your why? Which is not what I plan to talk about <laughs> originally, but we will go into all this. But, you know, you said it is hard to put yourself out there sometimes and say, this is what I've written because it's a piece of you. Writing is such a personal thing. And, and so you've got to remember, and this is what the key to book marketing is all about, is it's not about your book. It's about what your content or message does for someone else. And that usually comes from your big why. And so I'll just kind of tell you a little bit about my story and why I want to talk about this. You know, you've written a book, now what thing? And then we can talk about some of these issues like, you know, how do you actually get the writing done? But really, you know, once you've got the writing done, you know, what do you do with your book? So there's a lot of things we can cover, but, you know, I might even start with my big why. because. Um, you know, my degree is actually in English, and I always loved reading and writing. Um, but for some reason, I kind of made the decision, as you do when you're young, that I couldn't really make a living that way. So I went into marketing and advertising, which I absolutely loved. But in 2007, my sons were six and nine years old, and I was really struggling to get them to read for fun. And they would bring books home for the library. They'd be so excited. They'd start the book, and they wouldn't finish it. One night, I literally had a dream. A dream about a new kind of book where each time you turn the page you have to physically do something to drive the story forward so you brought touch into a story um, in about four months after that because it took a while to kind of figure out what I was going to do with that I actually had this idea for a book that integrated toys into a story and telling a story in a non-linear way where kids were motivated to finish the book they started um, so I sat down and I wrote this book called Treasure Kai and the Lost Gold of Shark Island. I'll show it to you. It's Treasure Kai and the Lost Gold of Shark Island. And what you see is it's got these, you know, little plastic three-dimensional treasure chests on it. And inside are little toys that are clues to finding a treasure. So it's kind Aww. of like a game story. It's a very, very alternative book. How cute. This is not what I started out thinking in my mind creating. <laughs> this was not part of my grand plan. This came out of kind of an inspired dream if you will but um so i wrote this book and i was sitting there thinking what do i do now i've written this story i have this vision what do i do i mean what is publishing you know i knew i needed to kind of get it published i didn't even really know what publishing is well publishing is just getting your book prepared and ready for public sale or even you know free purchase or download or consumption these days because you know there's so many books that are free as well but I had no idea. So I started researching the publishing industry and I spent about three months doing that and having coffees with people and meeting people. And you know, I am so grateful that I entered the publishing industry at the time that I did. Because at the time I did, it was, it was the time of the biggest change in the publishing industry thanks to technology. So when I started out with my book, the children's book, and I have gone on to do digital book apps um, for children, which I'll show you as well. And a lot of nonfiction books as well. So it's been an evolution and we'll talk about those things because not everybody who's online is going to want to write a children's book. But it's surprising how many people actually do. When I go to networking events and I mention what I do, the people who come running up to me are the people who have a manuscript sitting in their bottom drawer that they've, you know, they've had this idea that they wrote for the child and they want to develop or whatnot. But anyway, so the way the publishing industry traditionally works is and when I say the publishing industry I'm talking about having a company publish a book for you is that you would submit what's called your manuscript so your your typed up book with a query letter you'd send it to the publisher and then the publisher or the publisher's assistant would eventually read it and then they would decide if they want to um, publish your book or not if they decide they want to publish your book then they buy your book by buying the rights to your book and so what you do is you essentially sign over the rights to your work. You don't own it anymore, you, you hand it over to the publisher. They might pay you in advance, they might not. But what they do when they take it over is they take on all the responsibility and the risk of publishing that book. So they'll start working with an editor to help you work with the writing quality, um, they will do the book design, they will actually print the books, they will get them into bookstores for you or on the online stores if you're doing digital publishing. So the publisher takes over everything. And that all you know, sounds really good because they're, they're taking over the financial responsibility as well. But the challenge is that publishers today are having 
major challenges themselves because the bookstore industry is diminishing, the self-publishing market is rising, the online book market is rising. And so what they're finding is that there are fewer and fewer new authors that publishers can take on. They're not even publishing new work from existing authors because the market is diminishing in the traditional publishing route. So there's a real challenge of getting noticed. There's a real lack of speed to market. It can take two to three years for a children's picture book to be published. It takes a very long time. You lose your rights. You lose flexibility in the time to market. You just lose so much when you go with a publisher. However, it is, um, if you want someone else to just handle everything, then that's great. Also, there is prestige if a major publisher picks up your book. So, you know, that's kind of nice. But the bottom line is in today's world, no matter what, whether you're published or self published, you have to market your own work. And that's what a lot of people don't realize as well. They think a publisher is going to go out there and market their work for them, and it doesn't work that way. And it's one of the big challenges people have with their writing is because they think, oh, you know, I write a book, and um, then I have to go out and market it. And a lot of people struggle with that because they forget it's about their why, their big why, and the transformation that they offer. And it's not about buy my book, buy my book. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's a bit about traditional publishing. And then self-publishing is all about you handling all of that yourself and it's actually very very achievable and the this changes in the market in the last seven years in particular have been huge because one of the best things that happened is that print on demand has come into um, easy access for anybody with amazon's create space service anyone can um, write their book get it printed in a really quality way and have books to sell at the back of the room. So one of the books I've written is um, what is a book app and could you create one? How 27 authors did. And it's all, this is a beautiful printed book until I did this book. I did a lot of eBooks cause they were easier to manage and sell, but using create space, I did this as a printed book and it's great. Now the bad thing about anyone being able to print a book as well is that it means anyone can print a book. And so there's a lot of CRAP out there. So a lot of really bad quality stuff. And so one of the things I like to tell people is it's just so critical that you do good quality work. You work with a professional editor. It's very easy to find professional resources for reasonable cost to help you, whether it's getting your book edited, illustrated, a book design. There are just a lot of options out there. So that kind of gives you an idea. You know, you've got a couple different op options, you know, You've got your publishing route, you've got your self-publishing route, and I can go into more details about all that, but you probably would like to say something <laughs> <laughs> before I keep going. Well, you know, and that's what I love the, um, most people have this start, even humans for speakers, you know, they think you, if you're a speaker, it's only this way. And that's what they think about with books. Oh, I'm going to have a big publisher, you know, sweep me off my feet and hand me $500,000 and then I'm done. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it does not work that way. It doesn't work that way. But you know what is really neat? And I know I'm going to people who will watch your show will be speakers is that, you know, really your book is your business card and you would have probably said that yourself and had other people say that so it's not my own new fresh idea. But the thing is that when you have a book that in a very high quality way um, can demonstrate your expertise, it is a credibility piece for you. And so when you're on media, someone say, hey, this is Karen Robertson, author of the five, five books and, you know, can hold up a book or whatever. And Tanya Hoffman, you know, Clyde a day, the coffee shop way, which is such a great title, by the way. And um, so what a lot of people don't realize is that when they're printing a book, this is one of the first things I talk to people about is what is your objective with your book? Is your objective to just get your story or your expertise in a format that other people can read and share? Or is it to make money? Or is it a credibility piece? It's really important that you understand what your objective is because that's going to determine how you publish. And, you know, for example, if you want a credibility piece and you want something for backroom sales, then yes, you'll want an online digital version of your book just because it gives people instant access to your work and easy access to an international market. But yeah. if you can get it printed, then you've got physical books to hold up and have at the back of the room. 
That's the only reason this is a physical book because most of my sales are digital. Well, and what I've found too, and this is the hardest part for you know people to grasp a hold of, is when you're creating something like a book, what is the purpose behind it? You know, is it that you're just wanting people just to read the information, you know, or is it a marketing, you know, cause I use mine for marketing a lot, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, like you said, it's a fantastic, huge business card and you have to look at, well, what else would you put in your book? You know, a lot of times people just, they write the information and they're done and you've got to remember it is a business card, even if it's a fiction or nonfiction, you know, it really doesn't matter because when you're handing it to somebody, they're, assuming that you're you're a certain type of person or whatever yeah and the other thing that I find is people that make the biggest mistake in my view is by putting a aka name you know a, a pin name instead yes. of your yeah. real name yes and it's so confusing because then it they've got so a confusing. book they've got a book on their table or they're you know they're speaking someplace and people are like, oh, where's your book? And they're like, it's right here. Oh, I, I use it. And they have to explain it every time. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I get that question at least once every couple of weeks is, I want to use a pen name, should I? And the thing is, it's so confusing because, again, marketing comes back to you, the author, and people need to know with whom they're speaking or communicating. And one of the best tools we can use is social media and you need to have a consistent social media profile. And if you have your pin name and your true name, people are confused. And I know a few people who write with pin names and it's very confusing. So especially if you're in the business arena, I definitely recommend that you use your own name. And what you were saying as well about this being a marketing tool, if, if this is a book that you, you're a speaker or you're a professional and, and your book is your business card, is use it like one create a special page on your website link to it throughout your book or not link to, well link to it for the ebook version but talk about the link there what I do with my books because the book app world does change is I send out free updates to people so I have called action go in sign up on my website so I can send you the free updates and I send new author interviews and new content that I do Plus, they can get additional content and videos that you can't communicate through here, but you can enrich that experience through online. And so when you're creating your book, don't just think about the book. So that's when we're talking about this type of like a nonfiction book. But even fiction, you can deepen the experience people have with characters as well. Like with Treasure Kai, you know, I've got my printed book here, but we've got a website. And on the website, we've got fun fact videos that... Um, are springboarded from content that's in the game or, or the book. And also we've, we've got a video game that we created. We've got a whole bunch and, and curriculum activities for teachers that are common core standards aligned. So, you know, your book is almost like your storefront in a way, but then you've got so many other things you can deliver. So use that book to drive people to other ways to connect with you. But always oh, wow. remember your big why. <laughs> 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 And everybody yeah. can do it, you know. I know some of you sitting out there are going, oh, that just sounds like so much. But nowadays there's so many people, you know, like Karen, that will help you and yes. walk you through the mm -hmm. whole thing. You know, even for me, I found a publisher, and this is another kind of genre, is, is the mid-publisher, the ones that will kind of do it all for you. And yes. you still have a publishing name, but you're they don't own the book. So you end up still, you know, so it's a, usually an upfront fee is what I'm saying. So you're paying them to kind of do it all. Yes. And, and you get to go and sell it. So that's absolutely. Thing. Yeah, it is great. to. That is an option for a lot of people to do that very thing. The thing is, you know, just understanding what issues you need to know about, like who's going to own the rights to the book. That's probably the key thing. And then who's going to be doing what with the book, which roles or whatever. But even in the children's arena, there's this company called Dragon Pencil that I worked with seven years ago. And they specialize in helping people self-publish children's books and bringing in resources. And they are brilliant to work with. And so, you know, it's a lot of people think in terms of um, longer form books, novels and business books. But the children's book, there are a lot of people who dream about creating children's books, and there are a lot of ways to find 
illustrators and book designers and all you need to do is even just spend an hour with someone who knows and can guide you to all the right places and then you know you get your questions answered and you just go get it done but book packagers the type that you were talking about are definitely way to go the key is it comes back to quality writing first and foremost and it has to start with a great book and you know what if if you feel like your writing's not good enough work with a ghostwriter or work with a friend and co-write a book I'm, I'm ghostwriting a book for somebody right now and not because he can't write the book but because he doesn't have the time um, so we sit down and we have sessions and we do dictation and then I you know am working on the book and it's not what I want to do forever ghostwriting but this is someone that I really I love what he's doing and want to be able to help bring his message to the market. So there are a lot of ways to get your book done. So, yeah. yeah. One of the new trends that I've, I'm jumping into is little tip books, you know, mm -hmm. just very thin, like 50 tips and people, you know, it's more affordable for them to buy the book. So instead of my $20 book, it's usually a $10 book and they can read it really quickly. So even if you feel like you can't sit down and write out an entire book, there's so many options now. Be creative. You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be the same and kind of traditional view of what people think a book has to be because it's not that way anymore. That's right. It's, it's your own creativity. Remember what your key message is and your why. How do you add the most value to people? And, you know, it's a lot like speaking as well. Don't be afraid to give away your best stuff when you are creating these small pieces or your bigger pieces or your free reports or anything that you're creating because, you know, that will help people to understand who you are, why you're doing what you're doing, and want more from you. So, yeah. yeah. And I find that when I started writing, I was just kind of writing. And then when I finally met my publisher, he's like, what are you doing? He goes, figure out an outline. Once I figured out an outline, it was so clear what I needed to do. And yeah. for me, I guess, you know, I'm just not that, you know, organized or my mind doesn't work like that. And yeah. so for me, when I put it into an outline, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, look, I, now I know what to write on. <laughs> Actually, can I give you a tip on outlining, which is okay. so fun, is um, get sticky notes and get a big blank wall and outline that way, linearly, because then you can easily move chapters around and figure out, well, we were go I'm ghostwriting this book um, for this person, and that's what we did. It, it took about three sessions for us to sit down and do a brain dump of everything that he knew and wanted to cover and then we just started creating this outline but when you do sticky notes it's really easy to visually see it and move stuff around and when I do courses or programs or anything that's usually what I do love it yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, how exciting is that I know, I'm sticky notes. yay yeah, yeah. I I do different I, colors I as well because you do your main, your main section, like your main ideas are in the big and your support ideas are your stories or your quotes or whatever. And it's a really neat way to build a book. And it makes you feel good, too, because you sit there and you see your whole book up on the, you never want to clean your wall. And I always think it's funny because a lot of people start with the title. And the, my title changed like a gazillion times. And it wasn't until I was actually on stage giving a presentation and the title came out because it was a guy who was like, Tanya, no one can find people in coffee shops. I'm like, shoot, it's like flying in a day in the coffee shop way. And I'm like, ooh, that's good. I stopped, <laughs> stopped the whole presentation and wrote it down because I knew I wouldn't be able to remember it. So yeah. It comes to you in the middle of the night or wherever you have no yeah. idea. <laughs> well, so my Treasure Kai book went without a title for nine months and it drove me crazy. And because I just had all these stupid NAF titles, I couldn't think of anything that was creative or interesting. Um, and then one night I was about to drift off to sleep and I was starting to think about, because it's an adventure book, and I started thinking, okay, um, you know, what were the great adventure stories? And I immediately thought of um, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones and the blah, blah, blah. And I thought Treasure Kai and the Lost Gold of Shark Island. Like, it just came out. And then the next one's Treasure Kai and the Seven Cities of Gold. And uh, it was just, so the reason I share that with you is to look at other titles and look at potential naming conventions that you might be inspired by that are relevant, don't copy, but that are relevant to you and the work that you're doing. 
There's a really famous story. Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen created the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. And it was a collaboration between the two of them. And they also went for ages trying to figure out what their title is. And they would go to bed at night just thinking, oh, we want a mega best-selling title, mega best-selling title, mega best. And one night in the middle of the night, one of them, I think it was Jack Canfield, woke up with, might have been Mark Victor Hansen, um, Chicken Soup for the Soul. So one called the other in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning and said, hey, it's Chicken Soup for the Soul. And the other was like, oh my gosh. And the chill factor, like a lot of times, many of us have that, physical response when we know something's right. Yeah. So yeah, try not to push your title. Wait until you get that tingling or whatever your physical response is. Yeah. But your title's brilliant and it just came out of an inspired moment. You just have to kind of be watching and listening for those. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well um, can I say something else as well, real okay. quick. This made me think about title and testing it out with other people. You said some people are really worried about criticism and getting, you know, nasty feedback and everything. Always. Really, the best thing you can do for that is to share your work prior to publication. So get it out there and have people read it and give you feedback because believe me, you would rather hear harsh things from people who know and love you than you would from the public. And you know what? You can't please everyone. Some people are just not nice. So they don't belong in Tanya's groups because you require people to be nice. But um, yeah, that is the best thing you can do is to hand that work over to a number of other people. With my children's book, I went into children's classrooms. I had about a hundred different um, kids reading my books at different stages, trying to give me feedback, make sure they understood the words, make sure things made sense. You know, there was continuity because you're, you know what you're talking about so well that you don't realize sometimes when you're getting jargony or yeah. when you're kind of assuming knowledge that your reader may not have. Well, that's why it took me six months to edit it with my editor, you know, and yeah. because, you know, he was like, what are you talking about? Or you said this like three times <laughs> in this whole book. And I'm like, it was so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, get other people to read your book, you know. Oh, my gosh. Well, you're giving yeah. away something today. So what is that? I am. Yes. Yeah, so I'm giving away. It's Coaching with Karen. So uh, two hours of Coaching with Me. It's a $500 value. And it can be talking about anything, whether you are at the stage of just writing or you want to know more about publishing or marketing your own books. I cover all of those things with, with my clients, and I love working in all of those spaces. Having a marketing background, that's, that's one of the things that I can really bring to people, well, even in the writing process, is start thinking about, okay, this is your why. This is what you're doing now. How might you market that? How might you use this particular piece of work um, to take it further so you can touch and impact as many people as possible. You know, some people get really funny about selling books because it's, they're selling their work. But really, when you're selling your book, you're trying to find readers for your work. Why do you want readers for your work? Because you have a big why. You have a transformation you want to deliver. When you come from that headspace and you create from that headspace, that's where the magic happens. So that's what I'm giving away. And so how you enter is you go to my website, site, which is digitalkidsauthor.com forward slash win forward slash. So again, it's digitalkids with an S author.com forward slash win forward slash. And that's my website where um, people access my children's writing and my nonfiction writing about creating and marketing book apps. Cause that's this particular niche that I really play hard in is how do you market and we're, how do you publish your children's book as an app? A lot of people don't know what an app is. I'll, I'll just show you really quick. It's a um, digital book that you read on, on the iPad. So I'll just pull up one of mine. See, and what's neat about it is you, you can kind of um, include sound and animation and narration in a little storybook. Nice. So my passion, you know, having dyslexic children is interactive multisensory reading. That's why I created a book with toys, and that's why I created digital books that are apps that you can come into and bring the character into the narrative, or bring the reader into the narrative with the character. Nice. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you being on today. Make sure everybody goes in her contest because, oh my gosh, and they're going to be able to do this if they're listening now or three months from now, correct? That's right. I draw a winner once a quarter 
and then we just schedule the sessions. We can either uh, do it by phone or by Skype. My favorite is video Skype. I lived for 18 years in Sydney, Australia. Whenever I did video Skype, it was just like having a coffee with someone, even if they were in Zurich or America or London, it didn't matter where they were. And um, yeah, so that's usually the way that we do it. And the sessions are yours to decide what you want to cover. You're going to have a few different short sessions or one long session, whatever works for you. So yeah, digitalkidsauthor.com forward slash win. And uh, that's it. Yay. Well, thank you. I want you to definitely come back. I'd love to talk more about the apps. So everyone go check out Karen, Karen Robertson. Yay. And thank you for being on today. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. And everybody, it was fabulous. Thank you yay. so much for having me. And Good. make sure that you're here next time. We've got another amazing presentation and guests coming on. Information for you. And have a absolutely fabulous day because why not enjoy your life and have a blast. Bye, everybody. Bye, Karen. <laughs>